Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another daily Marvel Snap video. Today we have a pool two movement build, and I did experiment and try to build a pool one movement build, and if you're not quite here, if you don't have all of these cards, I would say try one of the other archetypes. I was able to steal some wins with a pool two movement build, but it felt like I was really clawing for each and every win, and every single game was tough. And so for this build, we have a couple of different cards to enable movement, to allow us to shift our cards around, to be able to buff them up further, and just overall kind of deceive the opponent into thinking that we're going to do something and then maybe doing the opposite. And so in this list, we have a few cards that enable movement. They're going to allow us to move our cards around the board. First up, we have our Iron Fist. We have Cloak. We have Doctor Strange. And then finally, we have Heimdall. And then we have the cards that benefit from getting moved around being Craven, our Multiple Man, and our Vulture. These are all going to get upside anytime a card is moved around, either in their lane or they're moved themselves. And then we have a couple of other small components that will allow us to buff up our cards. So we have Forge and Hulkbuster. These are great when combined with Multiple Man, because if we can buff up Multiple Man before he moves, he will actually be shifted around the board at a higher power than his three base power. If we combine him with Hulkbuster, he's going to be a seven power multiple man that is then duplicating across the board. At that point, we can start pushing a decent amount of power rather than just the three power body. It's kind of lackluster. And then for the last kind of game finishers, we do have Chavez. Sometimes we're not going to want to shift our cards around. Chavez is in here as a way to one, help us draw into our movement cards a little bit more consistently, but two, to give us an alternate play line. If the opponent is going to anticipate that we're shifting our cards with the Heimdall, sometimes we're going to find a win condition just dropping Chavez onto the board. And very similarly, we have Iron Man. Iron Man is going to be kind of sneaky. Sometimes we just drop this on turn six as a way to elevate one of those competitive power lanes and leaving the other lane as is if it is powerful enough to hold its own. We have a couple of kind of sneaky in-game plays that we can sneak onto the board so that we are not telegraphing every single game we're going to shift our cards with Heimdall. Some games or a lot of games that will be the best move for us, but sometimes we're going to go with a little bit of rogue-like elements and we're going to deceive the opponent. Now movement decks are sometimes difficult to, to navigate. They are a lot of fun when they work well. They're not always incredibly consistent. We've built this one to try to feel as consistent as possible. But if it's not working for you, maybe maybe check out one of our other builds and then come back and revisit this one a little bit later. Sometimes just refreshing your deck can do a lot. But that is the rundown of the deck list. Let's go ahead and jump into a couple of games. All right. So first up, we have Smokey. The first location is Subterranea, which does disrupt our draw quite a bit. I think we're going to drop Craven on two. We can drop Vulture on three into another lane. We can pull Vulture in with our Doctor Strange into the Craven lane as a way to push a lot of power onto the board or in that lane. And then depending on what else we draw, we can we can look at it from we can look at it from there. So let's go with the Craven play into the Hellfire Club. And then we will we'll kind of go along with the Vulture play line uh, for now. I think that's going to be our best bet. And so let's play the Vulture onto the board. We're still going to lock in the Doctor Strange. If we get in, if we draw into something like an Iron Fist, Kamar Taj is actually pretty cool in that it will double trigger it. It will cause it to shift twice, which I find really entertaining. But let's go ahead and pull Vulture over with our Doctor Strange. We're not going to drop the rocks. We're just going to hold them in hand. I don't think we have any reason to drop them um, unless maybe we hit them with a Forge bonus, but that doesn't feel like the play line that we should be going with. And so they do a Swordmaster, which double discards. They're running a discard deck, uh, maybe similar to what we ran earlier today, or I guess in yesterday's video. And so the double discard is pretty big. They have swarms that they can flood onto the board, uh, which is massive. And so we will see, uh, we'll see how that plays out. Um. Okay. So what if we did? So what if we did something like? a cloak into the far left lane we can then drop a forge into kamartage that'll trigger twice we can move our cards over so we can move craven and doctor strange over maybe we leave the vulture here we drop iron man as a kind of diversion into hellfire club instead of dropping a big shift card that's going to give us plus four on iron man which then duplicates 
And I, I think we can find a win condition, depending on what they drop over here, and of course what they end up discarding if they discard this turn. But that's our that's our tentative play line. So they don't drop anything this turn. Interesting. So we know they have swarms. Uh, we know that they probably have an eight power apocalypse or a nine power Chavez. So nine power is the is the play to beat. They can shift their cards over, which is a little bit scary. Uh, let's go with Craven. Let's go with a Doctor Strange that will buff up our Craven. If they move cards over, that will further buff him up. I think we push our Forge over just as a way to continue to buff our Craven even further. And then let's drop the Iron Man. That's going to be a 16 plus 8. That's going to be like 24 power in Hellfire Club. Actually, do we need that much power in Hellfire Club? That's a lot of power. Otherwise, it's just 8 though, which I think becomes an issue. So let's... Um, are we confident enough to snap? They have some swarms on the board. We're not confident enough to snap. I'm not confident enough in the Subterranea lane. Hellfire Club, absolutely. We are massive. Ooh, wow. They stack all of their cards in Hellfire Club, and they don't shift any cards around. Very interesting. That's kind of the power that Craven provides, is that it makes them not want to shift their cards. Because if they shifted their cards, they know that they're going to give us a buff as a result. And so we are able to find the win condition with our Vulture, with our Iron Man, and the kind of sneaky play to stack our power in the left lane. When they thought maybe we would move our cards around and then shift with Heimdall, maybe they just thought it was going to be a Chavez play. But we were able to find the win condition regardless. And so we should have snapped. We went against our better judgment. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Seawit-tastic. And in our starting hand, we have our Iron Fist, we have Craven, Hulkbuster. So we're going to skip on turn one. Um, we're going to drop Craven on two. We're going to hope for like a multiple man so that we can combine that with a Hulkbuster. There's a really cool interact. That is acceptable. <laughs> There's a really cool interaction uh, with multiple man. So let's go ahead and throw our multiple man on to the far right lane. We're going to throw it into middle. Um, we're, we're feeling nervous. We're going to throw it into middle. Nope, we're going to gamble. We're throwing it into the far right lane. If this one is like a space throw, and then that pretty much tanks our hand, we'll jump into the next game. But if not, then we do find ourselves with some uh, with a unique amount of upside. Now, something I really like with the Hulkbuster interaction is that it does something pretty cool. We have to merge this time, though. If we could drop our Iron Fist and Hulkbuster, so if this was turn four or if we ended last turn with our Iron Fist, whenever whenever Hulkbuster merges, he will merge and then it'll get pushed over with Iron Fist. So it's a way to cheaply or easily and quickly start moving your cards around. But with Expansion, we want to make sure that the merge with Multiple Man goes through. So we're just going to we're going to we're going to snap um, and then we're going to go to the casino. We're going to merge our Multiple Man and Hulkbuster. And then we'll see what we get from the Expansion Casino. We do have Heimdall to shift our cards on that last turn. So we're going to have at least 7 power in the Expansion after all is said and done. So the Iceman hits our Craven. That's not a huge target at this point. I don't think we run into that many cards that we're going to end up moving around the board. And so I think it's probably okay. I don't know that we even drop that this turn. Ooh, they draw into a Magic. So it extends the game. We get an extra turn. We get a 7th turn for this game. Um, which allows us to really start enabling our combos quite a bit. We get Punisher, which is okay. We can play Craven. We can play Iron Fist onto the board. Next turn, we can play Doctor Strange here as a way to pull Multiple Man over, and it will push our Doctor Strange away. Eh, it's it's an okay play line. I don't think it's great, but it gives us a way to make use of our Craven. And then the more cards we have here, the better our Craven is going to perform after we shift everything with Heimdall on that very last turn. So our last card is Iron Fist. So whatever we drop here is going to shift over to the side. Maybe we don't go with the multiple man and we go with the, the Vulture instead. Which one do we think is going to be our win condition? Spreading the power of seven all over the board or getting a really powerful Vulture? Let's, let's lean into the multiple man. This is going to pull him over here. Multiple man will snap back here. It'll stay here. And then Doctor Strange is going to go over here. And I think we've already snapped. So let's go ahead and lock that one in. The, the big power with Vulture is great, <clears throat> but it does put him in with, within Shang-Chi range. He can actually get destroyed after you move him twice. 
And so it becomes a little bit riskier to lay all of your eggs in that vulture basket. Since we already have the, the Hulkbuster that's merged with multiple man, I think that's gonna be our better, safer play line at kind of spreading our power all across the board where we can. So the Jessica Jones does buff up by four because they don't play anything there. We move our multiple man over. We're gonna have a pretty decent lane here on the last turn by dropping a Heimdall. And we're gonna have a pretty decent lane here as well. And so depending on what they do here, I think we'll determine a lot about our overall power push. So where do we want to compete? Where do we want to compete for our power? We can, we can drop our Iron Man into whatever lane we think we want to, to elevate. So if we drop it here, that's going to shift over into nowhere. This will then, this will therefore be an insanely huge, an insanely huge lane. If we think this is already going to be enough, we can drop Iron Man here. And then when we shift cards over with Heimdall, that will push everything but the Iron Man, the Iron Man, the, the multiple man snaps back. That gives us a pretty good lane here, a pretty good lane here, and a pretty good lane here. I think that's going to spread our power the most. Now, we could go with something a little bit simpler like a Chavez or maybe even a Vulture since we know that we're going to that we're planning on shifting on that final turn, but I think we're going to go with an Iron Man. Right now, they skipped. They're probably going to drop an Infinite on this final turn, and so that means that we already are winning in nowhere. We have three power, even if we don't push anything else. They're going to have to push power into and swing multiple lanes uh, to be able to find that win condition. So if we drop Heimdall here, it's going to shift our power here. It's going to move a Punisher, an Iron Fist, and a Multiple Man over here. So that's going to end up being a uh, pretty substantial lane. It should beat 16. Our Multiple Man snaps back over here. Iron Man elevates it to 14 because Iron Man's not going to have a space to move over. And so that's going to be pretty important to, to, to know or to kind of pay attention to. And once we move everything over, this, this Multiple Man's not going to have a chance to snap back into Washington, D.C., so we do feel pretty confident. I anticipate an infinite play here, but I don't think it's going to be enough wherever they end up dropping it. Oh, right. So they go with a, I assume, an infinite into the far left lane. So between all of our cards, we're not going to overcome a 20 power push in nowhere. But that's okay, because we overcome the Washington DC lane. We overcome and retain the limbo location because of our Iron Man, um, our kind of sneaky way to push additional power even into that far right lane, which for a movement deck is usually the weaker lane. Um, it's usually the lane that has the most opportunity for the opponent to steal for a low power level. But by having Iron Man where he didn't have space to move, we were able to guarantee that we locked that one down. And so not the easiest win, but it is a very satisfying win. We'll take those four cubes. Let's go jump over into another one. All right, so next up we have TK. The first location is Miniaturized Lab, so no cards can be added into this location. So uh, even if we dropped a Cloak on two and they had cards outside of this location, nothing is going to be able to be added here. We do have a, a slight advantage in that we're going to be able to stack cards here, and on turn six we can shift them over. Because TK is only going to have turn two and then a few small... Uh, and then a small chance on turn three to be able to... And then a small chance on turn five... And then a small chance on turn six to drop additional cards into the miniaturized lab. So we do have a, a slight advantage over what they can do. I think we're going to push for winning kiln. If we can lock down and win kiln, maybe we just lean in and go with a, a big power play into the miniaturized lab. Maybe we stack a lot of our cards over into Muir Island as a way to like last turn, shift them over into kiln. These two locations are going to work, work decently in our favor, I think. And so we can do Vulture into Kiln. That should give us a pretty easy win condition in Miniaturized Lab with a Heimdall on turn six. Then we can start stacking cards into Muir Island. I think that's going to give us a... a, a okay. Um, wow. So we're going to be pretty restricted in what and where we can play. So with that, do we... I think maybe we move... Maybe we drop Craven. we move our Nightcrawler. We have Heimdall to drop on five. Nobody's going to be able to drop anything on... Ooh, 
That could be a sneaky way for them to drop Infinite. Victory. Or maybe they just didn't have the reach. So nobody was going to be able to play anything on 5. On 6, we were going to drop Heimdall here. That would shift our Vulture and our Cloak over. And so it'd be a, it'd be a pretty decent power push here. Kiln would get some support with a Draven and a Nightcrawler over here. And if they didn't invest here this turn, then we just leave our, these cards here and we could just pass the rest of the game. And so I don't count that as a win. Let's jump into one more. They play a Rocket Raccoon into the Atelian location. We play our Nightcrawler into the far right lane. We're going to end up dropping ooh, Craven into the Bifrost. And that's going to be a pretty decent way for us to push a decent amount of power. On, on three, we can drop a Multiple Man and our Iron Fist. On four, we can drop Hulkbuster. This is an easy snap. This might be a bot, but this is this this kind of play line or layout is really really nice for us. However, we are gonna we are gonna shuffle our Hulkbuster into our deck on turn three or after turn three with the Atelian location. So it could be better, but it definitely could be worse as well. Let's we can go ahead and move our Nightcrawler over. That will buff up our Craven this turn. Whenever they shift over with the Bifrost or after the Bifrost triggers on on after four. That will allow this to buff up by two with the Nightcrawler movement. They play a Scarlet Witch into the hub, which gives us an Apocalypse. We can't get away from the discard components. Let's go with a Multiple Man into a Teelin. Let's go with an Iron Fist into the Bifrost. We're going to hope that we draw back into our Hulkbuster on turn four. That would be perfect as a way to merge with our Multiple Man. That's going to start spreading a seven power Multiple Man around the board, giving us, giving us a really even spread of power throughout. Unfortunately, it does not look like we got the upside. Um, the last card we dropped was our Iron Fist. And so we can actually do our Vulture, which will push it over here. It will buff him up. Next turn, we can drop a Doctor Strange to pull it out of the Craven lane, allowing us to drop either a Heimdall there or just to shift our power in a little bit different of a direction. And so that is going to be the play line we go with. Bifrost is going to shift everything back over into the hub. So this is going to be a huge power play. Unless they have a way to change Bifrost, this is going to cause our Vulture to trigger twice. It's going to cause our Craven to buff up by eight power because he will move. He will gain power from the Vulture moving over. He'll gain power from everything that moved over with him over to the right. And so just an insanely massive Craven. And actually... Our Craven is larger than our Vulture, unfortunately. So we could either do an Iron Man, or I think we have a big enough power push that we can drop our Doctor Strange, we can drop our Cloak, we can move our Craven over. Craven's gonna move over here. I don't think he will buff himself up, but it gives us kind of play around potential. Um, we could just go with an Iron Man here, and then whenever it shifts, it gives us a decent push. But that's not what we want to do. We want to go for the flare at the end. We want to go for the big greedy play today, especially since it looks like we're probably going up against the bot. It's just one of those Hyrule games that is sometimes worth showcasing. They drop Spider Woman, which reduces the power of our cards in the hub. We can now move our cards over. They might do an Odin to re-trigger all of these. Um, so if they do, that's going to be... So if they do, maybe we just don't play cards there we can move our craven over we can move our doctor strange over to buff up our craven we can then drop our heimdall as a way to shift these three that will shift these three over and i with this triggering getting up to 17 power i think even with an odin play that's going to be eight more power it's going to trigger this actually eight uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 uh, could be an extra 12 power pushing it to 18. Actually, no, that's fine. We're absolutely fine. We're overthinking it. Let's lock in the Heimdall. That's going to shift our cards around. Craven is going to buff up. We're not playing any cards directly into the Bifrost in case they decide to use an Odin. Um, so that way they're not going to be able to re-trigger their Star-Lord. Interesting. They stack three cards into the far left lane. Not what I would have anticipated. We'll see if the Craven um, is going to be able to hold us down. A 20 power Craven, that is an infinite. That is an infinite on the board, um, which is absolutely insane. 
And then we have 22 power in the Bifrost, which is also absolutely insane. And so that is going to lock it down. They, The bot miss, misordered these cards. They could have done Angela first and then Mantis and then Storm to get a little bit more upside. But there wasn't, there wasn't any way they were going to match uh, this high roll of a power. And, and it could have been even higher. But sometimes when a movement deck pops off, it absolutely pops off. And with that one, we're going to go ahead and end here. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below. And if you're a newer player and you have some basic questions, make sure to look at the Frequently Asked Questions video over here that we put up yesterday. And so as always, this has been TLSG. Later, guys.